every day, you know, every day type shit, you know. Nothing, uh, nothing too crafty, but just you know, your family, your kids, your friends, that kind of that type of stuff, you know. Cloudy weather, good times, hard times, fun times, all that, all the basics <laughs> that everybody can relate to, you know. I got a guitar when I was about 10 and kind of messed around with it for a minute, you know? And then I didn't get back to it till I was about 15. Myself and uh, three of my best buddies, we were all uh, skateboarders, surfers, and we decided we wanted to start a skate rock band. So we used to uh, play in the garage of the drummers. His, the drummer's mom was in a blues band, and we used to play on their equipment in their, in their garage. You're wasting your life away, one Things are never gonna get better But Junior Wells was one of my all-time favorites, and <clears throat> you know that Donny Hathaway live record, and um, these are you know records that uh, that really made an impression on me at an early age. Uh, Junior Wells, Hoodoo Man Blues, and I really got into blues and started playing harp and put the bass down, and started playing a little guitar, and it just kind of came back around full circle from because I don't know really much in terms of theory about music, but. But playing blues gives you a with, under a, with that format. So I wrote I wrote a lot of songs like that, just in blues format type things. And then I kind of it kind of gave me a better understanding of music. You know what I mean? Like it just kind of evolved and constantly. Not even when I hear music now too. You know R and B blues all comes from blues. You know whatever it is R and B funk rock all that stuff. You know I got to play with a lot of awesome old elder musicians that have always been very encouraging. You know. And, I think that's a that's huge. That's like the ultimate compliment of praise as a younger musician. But yeah, that's kind of how it slowly evolved, and like I said, it kind of all came back around full circle. And basically, you write as you as you sing. Tell about that. Yeah, I mean that's just one of them. Uh, one of them Rain Man kind of things, you know, that everybody does shit different. We all process music different and do things different. But that's just how I always did it. And I just kind of, it's fun if you're working in the studio on a song brand new like that, you can just go back and you don't really need to write anything down. You can try some stuff and a line sticks and you can keep that and then go back and build on it, you know. Watch this one. <laughs> and all the high-end studios around New Orleans here, you know, or, you know, a couple here in town and on the North Shore in Manville. Well, Drew, I've worked with him, like I said, on a bunch of records, and now he has his own place up at the foot of Canal Street there, and it's just a funky, funky old building, and, you know, the walls are paper thin, and it's just... But the whole thing's like an acoustic guitar kind of resonates through that building. So, I mean, he's doing, he's getting the best sound he's got out of better than the high end places he was working at, you know. It's nice to see him in his own place, too, you know. Don't tell anybody about Drew's place, man. <laughs> Graveyard Studio, Bottinelli Way. Sweet magnolia, I should have told you. I think you know the way I feel. Sweet dandelion, sweet love of mine. I know you know the way I feel. Miles Weeks, been in Baton Rouge when he was 19. 
Prince cover band we used to play together. Not sure. Will McMaines, we used to have a band called the Tiny Dancers, all Elton John covers. And, you know, we decided to do this trio thing. <laughs> True story. That's a take. That's a take. Miles and Will and, and us, we've been doing so many trio gigs, it just, I think we had a good, I think we had a good strong base for, uh, we're starting the album out, the core rhythm section, and playing so much together that that I think that really made it just a good foundation to just put the icing on the cake with with the keys and the horns. You know what I mean? Little things in there that's kind of nice sounding. Right. So what you, whatever you get feel for. It. Yeah. Okay. Mark's played on like the sound of most of my records, and he just. He just butters it up, makes it sound amazing. Ties, just ties the whole thing together, you know. And, and then we brought Brad in, was a friend of, uh, of Miles and Will's, and uh, that's the first time I worked with him. It's awesome crowd, you know. It was nice bringing some. Uh, uh, got good energy, good vibe about it. So easy for those guys to jump in with us because we're just rolling it. You know? Yeah, the big fight. Out, but... We ended our romance the same night in an angry yeah, mood. It's just been awesome. I mean, these guys are incredible musicians and uh, really good guys, and just a pleasure to work with and be around. You know, that's a huge part of it. That's like their main part of it. Chemistry you have as uh, as friends, you know, that translates to the stage. <laughs> oh, action! So, Eric, tell us where you see your career in ten years. Somewhere like on the beach in Hawaii, you know, surfing, <laughs> strumming an acoustic, drinking coconut juice, and uh, you know, getting simple. I should have told you, I think you know the way I feel. Sweet dandelion, sweet love of mine, I know you know the way I feel. Has it really, really been since June? I've been sitting around here singing the same old tune. Trying to keep that out there, you know, keep it going. Keep that love out there. <laughs> That's it.